This week we have a shootout between Speedmasters, the Speedmaster Professional Moonwatch versus the Speedmaster Automatic Reduced. Guys, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and hit the bell. I'm just kidding. I don't care about any of that crap. So before I get up close and personal with these watches, I want to go over really quick why either of these watches is uh, popular. Uh, the Speedmaster Professional, aka Moon Watch, is famous um, for the clues in the title because uh, apparently it went to the moon and went to space with uh, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong and who's the other guy, Michael Collins, right? and uh, they wore these special hand-wound watches on their way to the moon and in other missions as well, not just the Apollo 11 missions, but the Mercury missions and so on. So it kind of made the watch really, really famous. Uh, apart from it being a really cool, beautiful watch, it kind of has a tie to American history or space exploration history in general. But there is another one that looks quite like it that came out kind of after it and it's called Speedmaster Automatic Reduced. I know it's a really bad name, but that's what it is, and you'll see the reasons why they put that name on it. Uh, a lot of people confuse these watches when they're shopping online because all of the watches look the same size because they get the same focal length, you know, for no matter what watch it is. You could be looking at a 29 millimeter woman's watch, but the photo is like right in your face and it's big and you can see all the detail and you think it's gonna be a big watch. Then you order it and it arrives and it's minuscule. Um, I think that happens with uh, the Speedmaster Reduced. I think people buy it thinking, well, it looks just like the, the regular Moon Watch. I don't really see much difference and it's cheaper. I can get it for 1800, 2000, whatever it goes for these days. Whereas the, the professional Moon Watch goes for, you know, used, goes for about 3500, 4000. I think that lures a lot of people in and they go, oh, I think I'm just going to get this one. Now, if you're one of these guys that's got, you know, smaller wrist, if you're very slender, if you're very short, maybe you do right by getting the Reduce. The Reduce is an amazing watch and maybe it's going to sit nicer on your wrist. I think this is what happens. People get confused between the watches. Also, the watches are very, very, very different on the inside. They have very, very different mechanics and they were built kind of for different purposes. So I'm gonna get in nice and close and give you guys a good look at, uh, at what the differences are and uh, why one watch is just as good as the other watch in many ways. So let's check it out, here we go. On the left of course we have the Icon, the uh, famous Speedmaster Professional, AKA Moon Watch. And on the right we have the Speedmaster Automatic Reduced. Uh, which is famous for all the reasons. First things first, let's look at the Speedmaster Professional Moon Watch. This watch, of course, was chosen by NASA uh, from a few other contenders. Chosen, of course, to be on the wrists of the guys in the Apollo 11 missions as they went substratosphere and beyond. And this is as close as it gets uh, that you can purchase today to the real one because it does have the Hesse-like glass. As many of you know, most wristwatches these days, most luxury wristwatches have a sapphire crystal normally because it is very scratch resistant and very clear to look through. Uh, Hesolite is a sort of plastic, it's plexiglass, and it was chosen, even though it's a cheaper option for the watch, it was chosen, of course, because it it wouldn't break into shards like sapphire crystal would if something were to happen in a space capsule that you wouldn't have sh tiny shards of sapphire floating around getting into equipment and so on uh, the hesolite would just merely crack or come apart in larger pieces so in the end it was a matter of safety that they went with the hesolite the plexiglass now the watch purists when they want one of these watches 
even though the sapphire crystal option is uh, very, very beautiful, they will tend to go for the Hesalite version because it's closer to the original thing that went to space. But also because it has its own features, it has a very particular thing to it. The Hesalite is more bulbous and protrudes above the watch more than the sapphire crystal version does. And it also has this strange effect that when you turn the watch to its side, there's a refraction effect through the glass, through the Hesalite, that kind of distorts the whole dial and makes all the elements on the dial kind of float into space, if you will. The hands seem to almost float off the dial. It's a very strange effect. Now, the Sapphire Crystal version, of course, does not do that. So the real Speedmaster fans love that about the Hesalite glass, that from different angles, the watch looks really kind of cool and sci-fi and weird and stuff. So the Sapphire version also has an open back and an exhibition back, also made of Sapphire, where you can actually see the movement. But this one is the regular one that has a closed back, but it has the information here, things like, you know, first watch uh, ever worn on the moon, etc. The Speedmaster, of course, is a chronograph, uh, which means it has more complications on the dial. Once you have these extra complications, these little guys here, and the buttons to control them, then you're dealing with a chronograph. It doesn't just tell the time, you know, the hours, minutes, seconds. It also times things. It's a more complicated movement on the inside. Now, this is actually not a second hand. Normally, of course, on a watch, uh, this long hand here would be the seconds hand, doing one rotation every minute. Um, but this is actually the timer hand on this. The second hand is actually right over here on the left. It's a little bit hidden away here. So it's the small subdial on the left of the dial. So I'm gonna stop the timer hand here by hitting this button. See, it's stopped there. I don't know if you can see, but the other little hand is still counting the seconds. It hasn't stopped. So I'm gonna hit this other button here, and you're gonna love this because you'll see all the dials go back to zero again, including the timer hand. So one thing I like to do is to get the, uh, the timer hand to synchronize with this seconds hand and uh, let the timer hand go around as if it is a seconds hand. It's just a little trick that a lot of Speedmaster users do. In the meantime, I'm gonna talk about the bezel. The bezel does not spin or move. It's not like a diver watch where you have a, a timer on the bezel. You're supposed to use the tachymeter and the uh, timing features in this chronograph when you're measuring, of course, the speed of a moving object or the acceleration of a car or a boat or a plane or whatever the case may be. Normally, I think race cars. And in fact, some of the more famous users of chronographs are all avid motor enthusiasts like Paul Newman and Joel Schumacher and people like that. Here we go. Let me see if I can get this right. No. Is it right? Yeah, they look right. They look like they're parallel. There you go. Over here, of course, you have your crown in the center and your two uh, control pushers for the extra complications. The stop and start and reset. They're all in a straight line, as you can see. I'm outlining that for a specific reason because it's a little bit different on the reduced. So I'd like you to remember that. I have it, of course, on a vintage leather strap, which is a very popular way of mounting this watch or wearing the watch. It does come on a beautiful bracelet, a very heavy, uh, robust, uh, solid bracelet that Omega have recently updated, and it truly is a beautiful bracelet. But it's not traditionally the way a Speedmaster is worn. Uh, I think the Speedmaster looks much better on a vintage leather strap or on a NATO strap, of course. So this is the reduced. Uh, what a terrible word to use. Nobody wants to hear that word when they're buying a beautiful watch, reduced. And of course it's called the reduced because it is reduced in size. It's smaller. The professional moon watch is 42 millimeters, while the reduced automatic is 38 millimeters. One of the other very big differences between the watches is that the reduced is an automatic watch. It will wind itself automatically on your wrist, whereas the 
the original moon watch of course is manual wind and manual wind only it will not power itself by moving around it has no rotor you know that half coin shape that spins around and dangles as you move around with the watch on your wrist and gives it extra power it's kind of an ingenious way of uh, making the natural movement of your wrist uh, keep the keep the watch running being that in space there is no uh, gravity uh, the rotor would not move correctly it wouldn't function correctly now the speedmaster reduce automatic gets a bad rap one reason is because it's smaller if you purchase it online thinking that it's just like the regular moon watch um, you might be a little bit disappointed when it arrives if you have a very large wrist as i do uh, this watch might look a little bit small on you now there was a time when uh, men wore watches this size even 36 millimeters um, so i bought this one and the real moon watch and i gave this one to my girlfriend she's tall she has long slender arms and this watch looks absolutely amazing on her of course i gave it to her on this vintage leather strap and it just really pops it's really sophisticated looking watch i think girls if there are any girls watching this video or girlfriends of the, of the watch nerds out there watching uh if you want something that's really classy and really sophisticated because i think that the selection for girls in the watch world can be extremely limited and in most cases are way too focused on the jewelry element of the watch they release all the cool stuff for the guys and then they make silly pink versions with diamonds for the girls it's it's really ridiculous this is beautiful engineering it's a much more intelligent looking watch and if your girl's wearing it it definitely gives a feeling of yeah she knows what the hell she's talking about and also this looks frankly it looks fucking badass i mean look how fucking cool this watch is on a girl she can wear a leather jacket and jeans and this thing will just peek out from under the uh, sleeve of the jacket and just complete the entire image or she can wear it with a fur and just kind of use it as a as a kind of an opposite sort of image it's very very cool stuff so again uh, this is an automatic watch it has a rotor on the inside but it's in there and it's swinging and dangling around and spinning with the movement on your wrist every time you take a look at the time or raise your wrist in any way you don't realize but you're actually giving the watch movement a little bit of uh, push on the inside so this has a power reserve of about two days if you put it down on your nightstand and don't pick it up uh, about two days later it will stop and you will have to wind it again uh, or move it around to get it to get it running again but as long as you pick it up and put it on regularly it will just keep going it won't need a winding now you can wind it if you like to give it extra power like most of the watches but you don't have to all the controls are the same as the professional model but the seconds hand is actually on the right side of the dial instead of the left You'll also notice with the design, because it is smaller, the complications are, are spaced a little farther apart. It is a smaller watch, so the complications kind of push into the side numbers there, carving away the little indices for 3, 6, and 9, just a little bit. Whereas on the professional, the 3, 9, and 6 are the same size as everything else, because there's plenty of room for the complications to fit on the dial. But here's the super interesting thing about this watch. This thing has two movements on the inside it has the omega 3220 movement as its main movement it's based on an eta movement and it also has another movement that takes care of the chronograph options it's the 2020 by Dubuis de Pro, and it takes care of all of the chronograph features of the watch and it sits on top of the omega movement so you have two movements sandwiched on top of one another Normally with watches like these you have jewels inside the movement. Uh, they use mainly rubies to reduce friction and maintain strength in certain points of the of the caliber where there is movement or pressure in the movement if it was steel or anything else it would eventually after years begin to rub and wear away or corrode whereas a ruby won't and a ruby has the minimum of friction so you know those parts where something is turning it's sitting on something else uh if if the ruby is the contact there that ruby isn't going to wear away as easily it will, it will take many years to wear away because a ruby is sapphire which is basically a type of diamond it's in the diamond family 
diamonds are also sapphires they're just higher pressure older so normally you'll see written on a watch maybe on the dial or on the back that um there are you know 19 jewels or 21 jewels or something and you'll wonder well where are the jewels i don't see any jewels on the dial what they're referring to are jewels that are inside the movement and most watches have about 20 to 25 so you're talking about a luxury watch or a high accuracy watch this little thing here has no less than 46 jewels in its movement because what you have is two movements and they have 20 plus odd um, jewels on each movement so this little thing is packing uh, well over 40 jewels on the inside of the watch between the two calibers that are sitting on top of one another it's quite fascinating i don't know of any other watch that has that many jewels i know the daytona has 44 and that's quite an incredible number 46 is a lot for a little watch like this that uh, barely costs two thousand dollars and the giveaway about the two movements if you take a look at the side is if you look at the controls if you look at the crown in the center is a little bit below the level of the of the control pushers so what you have is you have the omega 3220 underneath and the dubuis de pra 2020 sitting on top of it that is a fascinating thing in itself that this watch is basically two watches inside the one little thing it's it's packed full of of interesting goodies this this watch is extremely difficult to make it's extremely difficult to repair unfortunately and it's it's an amazing little thing I, if you crack open a daniel wellington or one of those pieces of crap you'll see the saddest little movement on the inside with a handful of parts just looking very pathetic but if you crack this thing open there's a full metropolitan city on the inside so why does it get so much hate well it's not this for starters and in photos many people can mistake it for that some people buy it thinking they're getting roughly the same thing and then when it arrives it's so much smaller and they get disappointed or angry and it, it just makes them want the real moon watch all the more it is an automatic watch so it doesn't require winding all the time some people th say it's the beautiful thing about the real moon watch is that you do have to get in and wind it all the time to keep it alive it's a nice interaction between the the watch and the watch wearer and that is unnecessary with the reduced one issue of course with both of these watches is the hesalite does scratch easier than sapphire sapphire is very difficult to scratch i assume that's the reason they actually in the end made a sapphire crystal version of the moon watch you know some people are probably like yeah i understand it was originally plastic but you know just give me the best thing possible give me the sapphire i'm spending five thousand dollars i want my watch to be scratch resistant and i can perfectly understand that look there are two things i can say about this uh one is with a little poly watch uh you can buff out these scratches if you get scratches in the hesalite they're easily buffed out and if you do it properly you can bring the hesalite back to almost new condition and the other thing you can do, of course, is you can buy a replacement Hesalite glass to put onto the watch and replace the Hesalite completely if you, if you feel that you've scratched it way too much. Uh, the only thing you've got to be careful about there, make sure it's an original mega glass, though. Uh, spend the extra money. It's worth it because you can't see it here, but there's a tiny little Omega symbol in the center of the, um, of the Hesalite. And it's one way that watchmakers and buyers identify that the watch is actually real. So you want to be careful with there. The last thing to look at is the loom on the dial. So I'm going to knock off some lights so we can take a look. Now, I hope that's as impressive on the video as it is in real life, because this is, is simply stunning. And this is beautiful, beautiful loom, extremely well applied to the indices and to the hands on the dial. Of course, you can see that there is no uh, second hand loom on the reduced. You can only see the hour and minutes hand. Um, and of course, there are much smaller uh, indices. Uh, once again, uh, reduced, uh, reduced in size. And of course, you can see that teardrop shape there, almost diamond shape there on the second hand as it goes around. But all the other lines are just dead straight and super thin and fine. All right, so there it is, the Speedmaster Professional, aka Moonwatch, and the Speedmaster Automatic, aka the Reduced. Unfortunate name, but that's what it is.
All right, that's it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope that cleared up a few things about the Omega Speedmasters, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.